gentlemen. So I've been told. Now it's on the train's high job. Hey, I hope Charlie didn't forget to make a stop at the creek to pick up Henry and Elsie. Look, would you put these in the back bedroom for her? I thought she was putting Elsie upstairs in number three. Well, I don't think climbing stairs in her condition is a good idea. And would you bring in one of the rockers from the porch and put it in a room? I don't know what all this fuss is about. Women's been having babies for years. It has kind of worked out that way, hasn't it? <laughs> and bring a footstool from my room and put it in hers, huh? Footstool? These women are mollycoddled too much. My grandmother had ten of them as easy as falling off a log. As a matter of fact, I think she did with one of them. <laughs> a woman needs fussing over at a time like this. <laughs> Train's in. When are you going to learn to keep your big mouth shut? <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. See you tomorrow. Sure. Here. Take these to the hotel. <laughs> That dog ain't fooling nobody carrying them books. Everybody knows he don't go to school. <laughs> These are Elsie's. Easy does it, Elsie. All right, Henry. Hello, Mrs. Bradley. Oh, Elsie, hello. You look in the pinker condition. Do you really think so, Mrs. Bradley? I thought she was looking a bit peaked. Gee, Elsie, I, I just don't feel right about leaving you at a time like this. Now, Henry, don't worry about that. We'll take good care of her. Well, I know, but what if... What if isn't due for two weeks and you're only going to be gone three days? Yeah. <laughs> I reckon I am acting a bit foolish. Take it from me, Henry. They ain't nothing to having a baby. How do you know? You ever had one? <laughs> Not personally, but Kate's had three. <laughs> Goodbye, Elsie. Bye. Take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Get your vitamins. Have you got your vitamins? Well, you packed them for me yourself. A, B, C. That kid's gonna be born reciting the alphabet. <laughs> I'll take these bags up to the hotel. We'd better get rolling. I, I don't think I ought to go. Henry Barton, you get on that train and stop worrying. Yes, ma'am. All aboard! Have a good trip. I will. Uh, don't forget to take your calcium pills. <laughs> Please see that she gets plenty of rest. <laughs> All aboard! If you need me, you know where I'll be. Yes. Henry's so flustered over being a father, he don't know what he's doing. But you do. Huh? Well, don't you usually ride along with Charlie on the cannonball? <laughs> Holy smoke! Hey, Charlie, wait for me! <laughs> You're knitting them all blue. Pretty confident, aren't you? Well, if this one ain't a him, then the next one's liable to be. Or the next one. Ooh, sounds like you and Henry are planning a pretty big family. We'd like to have six. Three boys and three girls. When I get married, I'm gonna have all boys. Not me, I'm gonna have girls. I'm going to race dogs. <laughs> You'll change your mind about that. Hey, what's going on in here? Elsie's supposed to be resting. I'm not tired. Well, you ought to rest anyway. Have you taken your vitamins? Uh-huh. How about your calcium pills? <laughs> Took those, too. Well, here. You ought to put your feet on this stool. Oh, Mr. Carson, you don't have to mollycoddle me. Oh, don't worry about that. Uncle Joe doesn't believe in it. All right, <laughs> everybody out. Scat. <laughs> See you later, Elsie. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Now, if there's anything you want, day or night, all you've got to do is tinkle this little bell. And I'll come a-running. Enjoy your nap, Elsie, and when you wake up, you'll be ready for a nice, fast game of tennis. Tennis? Now, see here. Kate, this ain't no joking matter. <laughs> Things a matter of organizing for the emergency. What emergency? The one that could happen in the lower bedroom at the tinkle of a bell. She isn't going to be an emergency for another two weeks, according to Doc Stewart. It won't be the first time the Stork didn't go by his calculations. I remember when Bobby Joe. Did you hear a bell? No. 
You sure? I'm positive. Well, simmer down, Uncle Joe. Nothing's gonna happen. Yeah, but if it does, how are we gonna get the doc out here? Well, Floyd and Charlie have promised to stop by every run, just like they did with Billy Joe, Bobby Joe, and Betty Joe. Yeah. Though you might say they were a mite unusual being born in the daytime. What do you mean? Well, statistics say that more babies are born between the hours of midnight and 4 a.m. than any other time. Kate, we ain't equipped to have a baby during them hours. We don't have a phone, and the cannonball don't make runs at that time of night. Oh, Uncle Joe, calm down. Nothing is going to happen. Well, Kate, I ain't a man to take my responsibilities lightly. We got to think of some way to get the doc out here when we need him. Well, you got any ideas? Not at the moment, but I'll think of something. <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> This year's my plan to fetch Doc Stewart to the Shady Rest in case Elsie starts blessed a venting between the hours of midnight and 4 a.m. I'll see you later. Well, wait a second, Doc. You don't know what you're supposed to do yet. What do you think I studied in college? Mechanical engineering? <laughs> <laughs> well, he ain't important anyway. All he's got to do is deliver the baby. Sam, <laughs> give me a can of that coffee. Oh, sure. I'll just put it on Kate's bill. I don't want to buy it. I just want to borrow it to demonstrate. Well, this year, can represents the shady rest. But give me a can of them kidney beans. Now, this is Ben Miller's farm. I don't raise kidney beans. Shut up, Ben. <laughs> I want something to represent Fred Ziffel's pig farm. How about a box of bubble bath? <laughs> <laughs> this is your place, Newt. Yeah. Now, I want you all to pay close attention so you'll know what you're supposed to do, when and if. When and if what? <laughs> Floyd, you've been talking so much, I forgot why we're here. Deliver Elsie's baby. I thought the doc was going to do that. He will, if we ever get him there. Now, it's one o'clock in the morning. Elsie wakes up and realizes that the time is near and rings the little bell I gave her. <laughs> I wake up instantly, put on my boots, Go out in the hall. Ain't you gonna put on your pants? I put them on. All you mentioned was your boots. <laughs> you fellas ain't gonna listen. Sorry, Joe. Now, where was I? Out in the hall in your boots. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, I slowly walk down the stairs so as not to panic the rest of the household. Cross the lobby, take my gun from behind the desk, and proceed to Elsie's room where she's still ringing the little bell. <laughs> I knock on the door and enter. And shoot her. <laughs> if you fellas ain't going to take this serious... We're, no, we're real serious, Joe. Now, what do you do next? Well, after reassuring her that she ain't got nothing to worry about, I walk outside and fire my shotgun twice. Upon hearing my signal, Ben Miller gets up, gets his shotgun, goes out and takes two shots, which wakes up Fred Ziffel at his pig farm. Well, Fred's a pretty sound sleeper. Suppose he don't hear the shots. Well, if the shots don't wake me, my wife will complaining about that fool Ben Miller shooting off his gun in the middle of the night. Well, now fires his shotgun, which wakes up Newt, who fires his, and rouses Sam here, who rouses out Floyd and Charlie. Floyd runs to the cannonball and starts firing her up. Charlie goes to get Doc Stewart. By that time, Floyd's got up steam. They pile Doc on board and take off for the shady rest. <laughs> And wakes up Newt Kiley, who fires his gun, waking Sam, who rouses out Floyd and Charlie. Then, while Floyd is firing up the cannonball, Charlie fetches Doc Stewart and they highball it over here. Now, is that the correct firing order? Masterful <laughs> job of organizing, huh? I don't believe there's a man in the whole country who could have thought it up. Why, Kate, there's lots of other men in the country can match my thinking ability. That's a depressing thought. <laughs> but you know, there's not many men would have seen the money-making possibilities in this whole situation either. Money-making? Now, Kate, it's as obvious as a duck egg in a chicken coop. We're going to turn the shady rest into a maternity home. Where the money will start coming in hand over fist. Hold it! We'll be knee-deep in thousand-dollar bills. Now, slow down. But we'll be carrying that green stuff to the bank in... Whoa, Uncle Joe, whoa, whoa. Let's back up to the part where we're turning the shady rest into a maternity home. <laughs> this is the greatest money-making scheme I ever had. Do you realize how many nervous, expectant fathers there are who'd be happy to pay big money to have their wives stay here knowing the finest medical cares with an easy shotgun call? <laughs> now, don't thank me. You seen my gun oil? <laughs> Hello, Elsie. 
Hi, Mr. Carson. How do you feel? Fine. No little peculiar twinges? No. Well, you keep that little bell handy and don't you worry about nothing. Okay. Mrs. Bradley, do you need any help? I certainly do. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to get it from a much higher source. <laughs> I do believe Elsie's tickling her little bell. I don't believe I have to wake Elsie up for this. She needs her sleep for the real thing. <laughs> Uncle Joe trying to do, Ma? That's what I intend to find out. <laughs> Uncle Joe? Took you six minutes and 38 seconds to get down. You're going to have to do better than that. Lucky this is only a test maternity run. Test maternity run? Kate, you watch this boiling water and let me know the exact second it starts to boil. I don't know about the water, but my blood's heating up pretty fast. <laughs> Betty. You stand outside the kitchen door and take the pot of boiling water and pass it on to Bobby Joe, who'll be at the desk, and you'll pass it to Billy Joe, who'll be at Elsie's room. Uh, where are you going, Florence Nightingale? I'm on the front porch to clock the exact arrival of the dock. If I were you, I'd be under the porch. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be pretty angry with you. And so are a lot of other people in this valley, waking them up and causing all this trouble. I ain't causing nobody any trouble. <laughs> One of them just run through here. Well, we got plenty of time. How's the pressure, Floyd? 120 pounds. Ain't much, but it'll get us rolling. They should be rolling about now. Are the girls at their stations? No. I sent them to bed. I don't want them to hear the kind of language Doc's going to use when he gets here. <laughs> Where 
when do we get to Dead Man's Curve? What? I said, when do we come to Dead Man's Curve? <laughs> That was it. <laughs> 43 minutes. You could have made it almost as fast walking. Where is Elsie? Where anybody in their right mind would be this time of night in a room sound asleep. Do you mean that Elsie ain't really gonna... Then what are we doing here? Explain it to them, Uncle Joe. Well, uh, I thought it'd be a good idea to have a little... Uh, Test run. You got me out of an ice warm bed. You made me risk my life on that rinky dink train, and you don't need a doctor. <laughs> Stick around, Doc. I don't think your trip's going to be wasted. <laughs> You can't go to the county seat right now. There's no one else lives close enough to the shady rest to hear my signal. Grandpappy's there. He knows what he's supposed to do. You sure? Well, ask him. Grandpappy, you know what you're supposed to do when I fire two shots? Hey? You better talk louder, Joe. <laughs> you know what you're supposed to do? What? <laughs> ben, can't you put your business off for a few days just till Elsie's husband gets back? Gee, Joe, I, I can't. I can see as good as anybody. <laughs> hey, how about lighting a beacon fire? Oh, that wouldn't wake him up. Oh, uh, he don't sleep much. Yeah, a beacon fire. <laughs> yeah, Grandpappy's right on the job. <laughs> Ziffle to have sense enough to fire out a different window this time. <laughs> you shaved eight minutes off the last run. Oh, if this is another false alarm. Oh, it ain't a false alarm. The track's on fire. <laughs> a three-time mother, I doubt it. <laughs> According to the doctor, it isn't time for the baby. It's usually the baby that decides when it's time for the doctor. <laughs> Don't you worry, child. You get her on time. Oh, I'm not worried. I know I can count on Mr. Carson. Uncle <laughs> <laughs> Joe, you all right? Are you okay? Everybody keep a calm, cold head. Don't start the water boiling. Oh, no, you'll do that. You do the signaling. I know what I'm supposed to do. Where's my shotgun? No, Uncle Joe, you're supposed to light the signal fire. Lucky somebody around here's got a calm, cool head. Oh, Uncle Joe, you've got the matches. <laughs> Instead of standing there barking, do something. Go get the doc. What's taking you so long? Oh, Charlie and Floyd got this wet putting out the fire the other night. You can't depend on them in an emergency. You've got an idea. I can run the hand car to Ben Miller's and get Grandpa to fire a shotgun. I knew you girls would panic under fire. But Uncle Joe! Don't bother me with your silly idea. What are you going to do? Pile this wood on the wheel bar and take it up to the hotel and dry it out on the stove. <laughs> Not the rock, the 
dock. The stupid dog goes all to pieces in the time of crisis. <laughs> the signal. It's just another of that Joe's fool test. Yeah, but maybe. Ain't no maybe if you got the suicidal impulse to wake up the doc at your business. <laughs> Any sign of the train? No. And after all the practice I gave him. I'm afraid this is one time the stork's gonna beat the cannonball. I'm gonna need some help. Um, Billy Joe, you come with me. Me? I don't know. You're if... the oldest. But, Mom, come on. Gosh. What do we do, Uncle Joe? Uh, go boil some water. But it is boiling. Gallons of it. Uncle Joe, I've been meaning to ask you, why do you have to boil water? Well, uh, easy. After all the moon picture shows you've seen, you ask a question like that. <laughs> Joe, you've been pacing up and down for an hour. Why don't you sit down? At a time like this, somebody's got to do the pacing, or the baby won't be official. <laughs> the cannonball's coming. Darn fools blowing that whistle. Now they woke up the baby. <laughs> the baby. <laughs> with every one of you girls. <laughs> told you this wasn't a test run. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Just wonderful, Doc. Just wonderful. Oh, Billy Joe, I'm so proud of you. You did just fine. Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.